Welcome to Train Signal. You're watching a video on configuring print services. In this video, we'll start off by just showing you how to install a printer on Windows Server 2008. Then we'll take it to the next level and share that printer to make it available to the clients out on the network. We'll see how to control access to the printer through printer permissions. I'll show you how to install additional print drivers if necessary. And then we'll get into how to make your printing environment more efficient through the use of printer pooling or possibly printer priorities and scheduling. And then we'll come back and talk a little bit about troubleshooting printer problems. So let's go ahead and get started and I'm going to show you how to install a printer. For this lesson we're going to go ahead and connect to a member server once again. Matter of fact we're going to use the same one we've been using New York member one because it, there's really no reason to have a domain controller be a print server. So let's go ahead and connect to New York member one. All right, now the first thing we want to do now that we're connected is, uh, you know, I want to tell you, similar to the last video where we didn't have to install any additional roles or services in order to share folders, well, you don't have to install any additional roles or services to install a printer either. Now we're going to go ahead and install a role in just a few minutes because again there are extra utilities that you get with that role but I want to first show you how you would do it without installing the, the additional role. So the first thing I want to do is click on the start menu and sometimes you will find a printers applet right on the start menu but in this case it's not there so I would have to go to the control panel and then click on printers. Now if you'd like to have that printer's applet right on the start menu, here's what you do. Let me go ahead and close this. You right click on the start menu, go to properties, click on the customize button, scroll down most of the way, maybe about three-fourths of the way, and then here's the printer's checkbox, and by checking that box, you're telling it to put it right on the start menu. So I'll click OK, OK, and then notice start menu, printers much easier to do it that way I think anyway alright now if we want to add a printer the first thing we need to do is well yeah you guessed it either double click on add a printer or click the button right up here so I'm gonna click the button and it takes me into the add printer wizard now the first selection that I have is a choice between adding a local printer or adding a network printer now just to make sure that we're clear there are many printers out there these days that have Ethernet cards in them and you plug them directly into your network and the printer gets its own IP address, that would not be an example of a network printer through this wizard. You would still be installing that as a local printer to the print server. The only time that you're going to install a network printer, as it is in this wizard, would be if you were going to install a printer that was already installed and shared on another print server. We'll see that a little bit later on in the video. So for right now, let's click Add a Local Printer. We need to choose what port this printer is connected to. And you'll see you have your standard LPT and COM ports here by default. If you were using one of those printers that is connected directly to your Ethernet network and had an IP address, you would need to create a port for it. And the way you would do that is by clicking Create a New Port and then selecting standard TCP IP port which will take you through a, another um, quick two or three screen wizard which allows you to enter the IP address of the printer. Now I don't have an actual physical printer plugged in right now so we're just going to pretend right up here that it is connected to the LPT1 port. Okay your standard good old-fashioned parallel printer port. So go ahead and click Next and then you need to select a driver and you'll see here that there is a long list of manufacturers to choose from and the one I'm going to pick is HP and then once we select HP you'll see there's a whole huge list of models that you can choose from and I'm gonna go ahead and pick the HP LaserJet 4 that's a fairly standard laser printer driver I'm gonna go ahead and select that now if the make and model of printer that you're using is not on this list then you would need to go ahead and click have disk and then put in the CD that came with your printer 
and locate the driver that way. There is also a button for Windows Update where you could go out to Microsoft's website and look to see if they now have an updated driver that's not on this original list. I caution you with that because many of those drivers are too new and haven't necessarily been fully tested yet. So anyway, for this demonstration, let's just do HP LaserJet 4 and click Next. Now, it's asking me a question that you probably aren't getting on your screen if you're following along and that is which version of the driver I want to use and the reason why is because I already had this HP printer previously installed on this computer for a different lesson and it remembers that that driver is still there as a matter of fact I'm gonna go ahead and show you a little bit later in this video how you would completely strip a driver out of your system when you're done using the printer but in this case the driver is already there so I'm just going to say use the driver that's currently installed and click next. You most likely did not see that screen come up if you're following along. Okay, this is the screen you should be seeing which is it's asking for a printer name. And here it says HP LaserJet 4 and that name makes perfect sense. If this was let's say an HP LaserJet 4 and this was the one that was sitting in Ed's office well then maybe we would go ahead and put that in as the printer name because we might have a, a, a number of HP LaserJet 4's around the office. So I'll go ahead and I'll call it Ed's office. And if I want this to be the default printer, meaning if I want this to be the printer that things get sent to or documents or items that you want to have printed get sent to by default, then you would set it as the default printer. So let's go ahead and check that box and click next. Now it wants to know about sharing the printer. This is something we're going to talk about in just a couple minutes. So for right now, I'm going to say do not share the printer. This is something that we can either do right now, we can give it a share name, or we can do it later. And so I'm going to select do not share printer and I'll show you how to share it after we're done with the wizard. I'm going to go ahead and click on next. And it says you've successfully added HP LaserJet 4 Ed's office. At this point, you would typically click print a test page and see if an actual printout comes out on paper. I'm not going to print that test page. I'm just going to click finish. And there you go. I've now added a printer. Oop, excuse me. Let me expand that here. All right. HP LaserJet 4 Ed's office. Okay. Now that's how you would add a printer without adding a, any additional roles to your system. The next thing I want to show you is how to share this printer, as I promised I would, without adding the roles. What I'm going to do is right click and select properties of the printer and go to the sharing tab. All you need to do to share it is check the box saying I want to share this printer and give it a name. And maybe I'll make it nice and simple and I'll just make it Ed's office because people are connecting, maybe they don't need to know that it's a LaserJet 4. We're just going to give it the name Ed's Office. And then we could choose to list in the directory if we want to. And that's a significant checkbox because that has to do with whether or not this printer will be published within Active Directory. And the nice feature about publishing it in your Active Directory database is that it makes it easier to search and locate this particular printer. So typically I recommend checking that box. Now this button right down here, additional drivers, you would click this button if you expect your clients to need drivers that are not going to automatically be stored on this server. So let me click that button now. And you'll see here that by default, the x86 drivers, meaning pretty much every Microsoft operating system up through server 2008, as long as it's the 32-bit version, we're already going to have the drivers installed. And what that means is when the client connects, they're not going to need to have that CD carried around with them. But if we have users that are going to be using 64-bit or and or Itanium computers, then we need to go ahead and check those boxes. And then at that point, we would be prompted to install those drivers right here on the server so that they too would be readily available to the clients. So I'll go ahead and cancel out of there and click OK. And now 
just like with shared folders, we see the additional icon that's been added to represent that this printer has been shared. All right, let's go ahead and leave that alone for right now, because what I want to do next is install the print services role so that we can see the extra utility that we now have in Windows Server 2008 to manage our printers. So let's close out of here and click on start and go to the server manager. In the server manager we will click on roles and then we're going to go ahead and add a role and we're going to go ahead and add the print services role. So check the box and click on next. Here's a quick introduction to what print services are and then you can choose whether you just want to be a print server whether you want the LPD service which is used for interactivity with Unix environments and then we could also choose the checkbox for internet printing if we want to support the internet printing protocol or IPP which is where we can access and manage our printers through a web browser. But for right now, we're just going to go ahead and install the print server role. So I'll click on next. And it says, here's what I'm about to do. I'll click install. And it begins to install the selected print services. Now, this will take just a few moments. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. If you're following along, do the same. And I'll be right back with you as soon as it's complete. Okay, the installation is complete. As you can see here, installation succeeded. So I'm gonna go ahead and click close. And we now have the print services role installed. Okay, now let's go ahead and close the server manager because what I wanna show you now is how to use the print management snap-in. So let's go ahead and click on start, administrative tools, and we'll go to the print management utility. Now before I do anything in print management, I have to tell you, for fairly basic transactions and, and fairly basic print management needs, this is overkill. This is probably complicating what was already pretty simple. Um, but if you're in a large enterprise environment, then this is a utility that really could work out real nice for you. So anyway, let me show you how you would add a printer in this print management utility. And we're gonna pretty much do the exact same thing, but see how it's done through this tool. Now, what I'm gonna do is go over here to print servers and expand that, and it's showing me that here is the one print server that we have working in our network right now. Now, if we had more than one, we would see all of our print servers in one location. There again, like I said, in an enterprise environment, that could work out real nice. Now I'm going to go ahead and expand my New York Member 1 print server. And you'll see here that I can manage my drivers, forms, ports, and printers from here. So right down here we have printers. I'm going to highlight that. And here it shows me the same three printers that we saw before. Uh, the important one here is HP LaserJet 4 Ed's Office that we created just a few minutes ago. And I'm going to go ahead and right click on printers and ask to add another printer. Now you'll see that everything's pretty much the same, but the wizard is just a little bit easier now. I'm going to click on add printer. Now the first thing that I'll tell you that I see here is this button right here. Add a TCP IP or a web services printer by IP address or host name. Now that is something that we could have done before through the old way of doing things, but we had to manually through a separate little wizard add the TCP IP port, whereas now it's just a selection. This button right up here, search for network printers, is the same as you know before we had the choice of local printer or network printer. Well now pretty much these three buttons are all for the local printer and this one button is for the network printer. So if we wanted to do a TCP IP port, do it that way. If we want to use an existing port, we could do it this way. So all right, we could go ahead and pick, well, let's say, well, let's go ahead and leave that actually on LPT1. And I'm, I'm gonna explain why in just a little bit. Even though we already put one printer on that port, we're gonna put another printer on that port. And, uh, and again, if we wanted to actually create a new port, we could do that through this button. 
So right now we're going to go ahead and just do LPT1, same port as before. When I click on next, you'll notice that it already recognizes that I have a driver on this computer. So rather than asking me and then having me have to select one and then say, yes, use the same one or the existing one that's already installed, it gives me that option to pretty much use any of the existing drivers that are already installed on this computer or I could choose to install a new driver. Now I'm gonna show you what the screen would look like if you install a new driver, but we're gonna come back and actually use the existing printer driver. So let me click on next. And this screen is actually most like really going back in time. Uh, this is not exactly the same way as the screen is in server 2008. Uh, this would be back a couple generations. But anyway, here I have my list to choose from and then any manufacturer that I pick, well, then I'll get a list of models or printers to choose from. Now, like I said, we're going to go ahead and stick with the HP LaserJet 4, and I have a very specific reason for doing so. And if you're following along, please please do the same. Or at least if you want to pick a separate one, pick a separate one and then come back here and add another printer with the same driver. And then go ahead and click on Next. Here I have the option to, first of all, give the printer a name. So this time I'm going to call it HP LaserJet 4, and we'll call it other users and again you'll see why in just a couple minutes why we're setting this one up for other users now I could share this printer if I want and if I was gonna share it well then other users that probably be a good name right now this location attribute I skipped right past that the last time we were looking at this uh, I just want to point out the location attribute is something that is used pretty much for what you would think it would be used for. It's used to help locate a printer. What you can do is you can create a hierarchical naming convention for your locations and then searching for printers becomes quite easy in a larger enterprise. So we're not going to worry about that for right now but I wanted you to know what that attribute is for. There's another feature in an enterprise environment where you can enable location tracking which is where users will automatically find printers near them based upon this attribute. All right, and comments is just that. Just if you wanted to type a comment in, it's pretty much, it doesn't have any effect on the actual printer. It's just to explain to the administrator who's looking at the printer what this printer might be. So let's go ahead and click on next. And you'll see here that we're all set. Here's a review screen, I'll click on next. And the printer has been installed. Now I could choose to print a test page if I want to. And I could also choose to add another printer if I wanted to take me right back into the wizard. But I have both of the printers that I need right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on finish. And you will see here that now I have both the original HP LaserJet 4 Ed's office printer and then also the other user's printer that we just created. Now the next thing I would like to show you is how you configure print permissions. And again, this can be done either through the original printer's control panel or now through the new print management utility. So I'm gonna leave the print management utility open for just a moment, but I'm gonna go ahead and click on start and select this printer's option, which is the printer's control panel. That opens up the original printer's applet. And I wanna show you that if I go to the properties, we'll, we'll go to the properties of Ed's office for right now. I'm gonna right click and go to the properties. There is a security tab, just like we would find on files and folders on an NTFS partition. So let's go ahead and click on the security tab. And you'll see here that we have an access control list, just like we have on our files and folders. And then down here we have our different permissions and our checkboxes. And basically there are only three permission levels for printers. And the three levels are this. We have print, which is the lowest level of permission, which allows users to print to this printer. And you'll notice that's the default for everyone. Everyone's allowed to print on a printer. And each individual user can also manage their own documents. So if you're the user that sent the request to the printer, you could also then delete the request from the printer. Now the next permission, and I'm gonna skip one here, I'm gonna skip past manage printers and go to manage documents because that's the next most secure 
level of security. If you're wondering why these are out of order, by the way, they're just alphabetical. They're in reverse alphabetical here, and that's why it goes print, manage printers, and manage documents. But manage documents allows users to go ahead and not only manage their own documents, but they can manage all documents on the printer. And then we can come back here to manage printers, which is the, it, that's the full control of printing. And that's one thing I want you to keep in mind is there is no permission called full control. The equivalent is manage printers. You can do everything. You can print, you can manage everyone's documents, you can change permissions, you can do everything. And if you are considering taking the certification exam, that is something that I see come up a lot where you'll see a question asking you about full control permissions for printers and there is no full control. It's called manage printers. Okay, well what I wanna do here is I wanna go ahead and add, and I'm gonna add the user, Ed Lieberman. I'm gonna add that Ed Lieberman account and click okay. I wanna go ahead and give Ed Lieberman the full control, give all permissions to this particular printer because it, well, it's in Ed's office, so that kind of makes sense. And likewise, what we're also going to do is we're going to take the everyone group and remove them. We don't want everyone being able to go ahead and print to this printer. We want just Ed to be able to print to the printer because it's in his office. And I'm going to actually show you how others will be able to print, but the, how Ed will actually get priority over everyone else in just a couple minutes. So, all right, I'm all set there. We'll go ahead and click OK. And now I have set permission on the Ed's office printer through the old printer's control panel. Now let's close the old printer's control panel and let's go back into print management. And this time I'm gonna go ahead and pick on the other users, right click, properties. And you'll notice it takes me to the exact same properties window. So I'm gonna click on security. And in this case, I'll go ahead and show you that everyone is allowed print on this particular printer. So I'll click OK. And so what that means is right now there are two printers set up, one for Ed's office, one for other users. Ed has privileges on Ed's office. Everyone else has privileges on other users. Okay, so that's that's pretty much print permissions. Now I'm going to go a little bit out of order here from what I originally said I was going to show you because I want to jump to something called priorities. And we'll actually show you pri priorities and scheduling. And the reason why is because I've, I've been showing you these two printers and I keep telling you about how I have reasons for the way I'm setting them up. Well, the reasons are because, remember, that both of these printers are connected to the same port. In other words, here we have Ed's office. And by the way, I just double clicked to get back into the properties. You don't have to right click and select properties. And if I go to ports, you'll see that Ed's office is connected to the LPT1 port. And actually, you'll even see right here, it also shows that the other user's printer is connected to this port. Or if I were to back out of here, I could show you that by going into that printer, also on the same port. Now, what does this mean? What this means is that I have two software printers, meaning this print server has two representations of the same print device. The same physical printer is plugged into the LPT1 port and is represented twice. And the reason you would do this is for the purposes of setting up priorities or scheduling. So what I wanna do is I wanna say, all right, I have this printer in this office and Ed primarily uses this printer. But we do want other users to be able to have access to this printer if there's a problem they really need to print to it. But we want Ed to have priority. So what we're gonna do is go back into the properties of Ed's office. That's the one that Ed has privileges to. And I'm gonna to go to the advanced tab. And you will see here that there's a selection where you can set up a priority value. And this priority value can range from one to 99 or anything in between. And if two print jobs were to come in from two different printers, and when I say two different printers, let me go ahead and leave this at 99. I'll click OK. If a print job was sitting here that was sent via the Ed's office printer, 
And if a print job was sent in via the other user's printer, what the system would do is it would look at who has the higher priority value. So just to review, back on Ed's Office, Advanced tab, you'll see here there's a priority of 99. If I go to the other user's properties and go to Advanced tab, you'll see a priority of 1. Now what that means is if a job were to come in via both of these printers, meaning Ed wanted to print something and somebody else wanted to print something, Ed will get priority. Ed's job will be printed out first and then the other user would print out once Ed's jobs were done. Now the numbers don't have to be 1 and 99. I could have just as easily set up Ed's office with a priority of 2. As long as the priority value is greater than the other one. That's not recommended because you may end up having a third purpose come into play and maybe you want that third purpose to go between the two and there's nothing between one and two. So it is typical that if you know you want someone to have the highest priority, you put them to 99. If you want someone to have the lowest, you have them at one. But I've seen many situations where you have a priority of 10 and a priority of 20 and a priority of 30 and things like that where you have different priority levels but you have room in between. Now, the other thing that I want to talk to you about here is scheduling. And so let's create a third printer and we're going to put it on the same port. And I'm going to show you why. Let's go ahead and right click on printers and add a printer. And we're going to use that existing LPT1 port. Likewise, we're going to use the same driver. This time we're going to call it HP LaserJet 4 and we'll put reports. And we'll just share it as reports. Now the reason I just created this printer called reports, let me go ahead and finish out of here, is because this printer maybe happens to be a, a really fast printer and really good for uh, spitting out long reports. And maybe if we go into the properties of reports and go to security, we're going to go ahead and add a user, and I'm going to put in John, and that will take me to that John Doe account that we created. And I'll click OK. And OK. Uh, actually, let's see. John Doe can print. Yes. And then let's go back to the other users. And let's go to its security, and let's make sure that we add John Doe. Check names. All right. Click OK. And John Doe is going to be denied the ability to print to that printer. And it's giving me a warning, just as we talked about in the NTFS permissions video, is where anytime you set a deny permission, it always overrides the allow permission. So there's an extra warning here to say, are you sure you want to do that? And I'm going to say, yep, I'm sure I want to do that. Because what I just did, Ed's office only allows Ed access to it. Other users now allows everyone the ability to print except John Doe, who's been denied the ability to print. And reports, John Doe has been granted access to print to. And John Doe, by the way, is the person who does all our report printing. So here's what we want to have happen. We want to say that the reports printer, go into its properties and go back to that advanced tab, right here is where we can schedule it. We're going to say that this reports printer is only available from we'll say from 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. during the overnight hours. And just in case, just to add to it, we're going to make sure it has a low priority, and we'll leave it at a priority of 1. And because we're going to have a priority of 1 there, let me go ahead and click OK to accept that. Let's go to the other users, and let's give them a priority of, let's say, 10, just to give them a slightly higher priority. So what we've now done is we have made it that we have three software printers all pointing to the same physical device. Ed has access to this one, which has the ability to pretty much do everything at all times. Okay, Ed has full control over this printer altogether. Ed can print at any time of the day and has the highest priority. The other users can print to this printer, but they're going to have to wait in line behind Ed but they are able to print at any time of the day. 
And then we have this printer, which can be printed to by John Doe, who does our reports. But any requests that John makes, see now John doesn't have to work an overnight shift. John works a normal shift. But John, when he sends a request to this printer, that request is going to sit in the queue just waiting for midnight. And that's something you want to make sure that John is aware of because you don't want John to send a request to the printer and then walk over to the actual physical print device and say, hey, why is there nothing there? You need John to know, hey, your report will not print until at least midnight. So somewhere between midnight and 6 a.m., your report will print out and then you can get it in the morning. Now, just in case anybody else were to print anywhere between midnight and 6 a.m., well, because both the other users and the Ed's Office printers have a higher priority value than the reports printer, their jobs will still take precedence over the reports. Because we're going to say that these reports are something that we need to have, but not urgently. They are very low priority. We just need to make sure we have them print out at some point in time. And that is a very typical way that we would set up a printer environment in a corporate office. All right, now let's take a step back and talk about printer pooling. Now, printer pooling is very often considered to be set up or configured in the exact opposite fashion than we did with printer priorities. With printer priorities, we had multiple software printers all installed on the print server, but they were all physically connected to one physical print device. Well, printer pooling is the opposite of that. As you can see here, not only do we have just the one print server, but there's only going to be one software printer installed, and then that one software printer will actually be physically connected to multiple ports which then lead to multiple physical hardware devices. Now these hardware devices don't necessarily have to be identical but, and let me clear that ink out of there, they do all have to use the same printer driver. And you might be thinking to yourself, now wait a minute, I've installed a printer before and you know it's like every single printer out there has its own unique printer driver. And that's pretty much true. Every make and model has its own driver. But what you will also find out there is that many printers from the same manufacturer, even though they may be a different model, they may be able to all function with the same printer driver. Matter of fact, some of those HP LaserJet drivers, like the one we were just looking at, they have the ability to function not just a lot of HP printers, but a lot of different printers that are out there. So that's something you would need to look into. And what will happen is if you are using one driver for different makes and models, just because it can print to it, you may lose functionality of that model. You may have a model of printer that has many different options as far as print trays and sorting and stapling and et cetera, et cetera. But you may lose some of that functionality and just go back down to raw printing, but that may satisfy the need. Now, what is the need here? <laughs> Why the heck would we want to do this? Well, the reason we might want to do this is because we might have a lot of users who all need to print to the same printer. And one printer, one physical print device might not be good enough. A very good example of this might be a call center type environment. If you've ever been in a call center type environment, you know that a setup like this where you have an entire wall of printers is not that uncommon. And basically what happens is the job gets sent to the print server, right? You want all users in the company or in that one call center, let's say, to all print to the same location. And then that print server will go out here and figure out which one of these four printers is most readily available and then print that job out on that physical print device. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how to set this up on Windows Server 2008. Alright so here we are back on our New York member one member server or otherwise no, now known as our print server and what I want to do is 
really we could just pick any one of these printers. Let's just take the Eds off. Actually, let's use other users because that would be typical of a lot of users. Let's go ahead and go into the properties of this particular printer and then go to the ports tab. You'll notice that when selecting a port, they are checkboxes, which usually means that you can select more than one. But in this case, if I were to check the box for LPT2, that's the only one that I can pick. So basically, all I can do is pick one port to be connected to. That is unless I enable printer pooling. By checking the enable printer pooling box, I now can have multiple check boxes or multiple ports checked. Now what this means, if I were to set this printer up just how you see it here, this means that maybe there are three different physical print devices connected to the print server, one on LPT1, one on two, and one on three. And what that means is all the other users in the company, they all print to here, and there's one of three physical devices that the paper might actually shoot out of. So maybe Ed's office was only participating, right, because that's still LPT1. Maybe that print device in Ed's office was only participating in the pool of multiple print devices that we're going to use for the other group of users that are out there on our network. Okay, so that's how you set up printer pooling. As simple as a checkbox saying that I'm going to allow it and then selecting the multiple ports that we are connected to. Now I will tell you that typically your printers would be connected not necessarily via your LPT ports but via your TCP IP ports where each printer has its own IP address and then we would have a list of those IP addresses connected to a TCP IP port right here. That's how you would most typically find it in today's corporate world. Okay, now let me cancel out of here. What I want to do is go back and show you how to manage drivers. And there's a few different things that we want to do here. Now, one thing as a for instance is you may notice right here, there actually is now in the print management utility a container for managing drivers within your print server. That's one way we could do it. We could actually right click and we can add a driver. This is if we wanted to go ahead and add a driver to the print server. But what's probably more typical, let me cancel out of there. Click OK. That just wasn't basically saying, hey, you didn't add any driver. Well, I know that. I canceled it. What would probably be more typical, let me go back down to my printers, is if I needed to update a driver for, let's say, the Ed's office printer, let me go back into those properties, click on the Advanced tab, and then you'll see right here that we're currently using the HP LaserJet 4 driver. Now, if we had already added a driver to the server, well, then we could go ahead and just pull down the list and change what driver we wanted to use. But usually you can kill two birds with one stone by clicking new driver, going to the add printer driver wizard, which you'll notice is exactly the same as what we had before. Click on next. Go ahead and select our new driver, which I don't have any one particular driver in particular. But I'll tell you what, since we were using the HP LaserJet 4, why don't we go ahead and let's say we wanted to go ahead and upgrade to, if I could just scroll down here a little faster. HP LaserJet 5 and click Next and Finish. Now what we've done is we've actually updated the driver for this specific printer and also added it onto the server itself. It's not very common that you would just add a driver to the server only to later add it to a printer. Usually you're going to be adding it to the printer at the same time that you're going to go ahead and add it to the server. Now, another thing that is a real big problem, and matter of fact, we saw this as a, well, not really a problem, but we saw this when I installed the very first printer at the beginning of this video, where there was already a driver installed, and I told you back then that I would show you how to permanently eliminate drivers. Because here's the problem. If I go down to my printers, and let's just take each one. You notice, by the way, that this printer actually changed name. 
Ed's printer now changed name to HP LaserJet 5 when that driver changed. So let's go ahead and let's right click and delete. Yes, I want to delete it. And we'll take this printer, right click, delete. And we'll take the other LaserJet 4 and delete. Okay, so we've gotten rid of all three printers that we just created. The problem is, and this is very typical, is you'll delete a printer from a print server. Let me click on drivers. You'll notice the HP LaserJet 4 and LaserJet 5 printers are still there. Or excuse me, the HP LaserJet 4 and HP LaserJet 5 printer drivers are still there. And I don't want them there. This has caused many problems out there. A lot of driver conflicts and all kinds of problems when you install a new printer on this print server and you can't figure out why it's getting hung up always wanting to grab an old printer so let me go ahead and show you what you want to do is click on drivers and then in here right click and say remove the driver package or even just delete and it's gone now before I delete the HP LaserJet 4 driver let me go ahead and close out of print management because I want to show you that if I click on start and go to the old printers control panel applet, I have the ability to go up to the file menu and then go to server properties and then go to the drivers tab. And this is the old way of doing the exact same thing. Take the HP LaserJet 4 driver and remove it and it's gone all right so there you go now by the way if you notice that it was also asking about removing the package many drivers have an entire package which include extra utilities and things like that and really if you want to completely clean it out you want to remove the entire package all right so let me go ahead and click close out of here You'll notice that I no longer have my HP LaserJet printers that we added as part of this video, and we no longer have any of the drivers either. All right, so let's go and talk about troubleshooting printer problems. Now, when troubleshooting printers, I cannot emphasize enough how important this KISS method is. Now, KISS, K-I-S-S, stands for keep it simple stupid and that's just it very often when it comes to troubleshooting printers it's just it's the most obvious thing and that's the last thing that we're looking for it could be as simple as being out of paper or out of toner and and this can usually be figured out by just taking one quick peek at the actual print device and say oh look it's got a message on the screen saying I'm out of paper or out of toner. Most most today's printers have these screens that tell you that. Could be a paper jam. Now, if it tells you that the that you have a jam somewhere, again, most of today's printers, they'll actually instruct you on what to do to clear the jam. Open the front door, pull out the paper tray, open the back door, pull out the toner cartridge. They'll give you instructions on how to find that jam. Or maybe it's just not turned on. Someone hit the power button. Or over here, I've actually put the word offline. Now, this goes back to older printers. Uh, most of today's printers, it's either on or off. But some of the older printers, and even some of today's printers, there's actually what's called an offline status. So the printer can physically be on, but it might be offline. Uh, I've seen that recently with some all-in-one printers, where you have a printer where it's not only a printer, but a, a copier and a fax machine and a scanner. And, and that's typical that you might turn the printing capabilities offline so as to not get in the way of maybe some scanning or faxing or printing that you're doing. Or again, maybe it's not plugged in. I mean, there's a lot of really obvious things that would prevent somebody from being able to print. Now, the next thing to consider would be, it could be a networking problem. Again, very often, People will call into, let's say, help desk and say, I can't print. And the first thing that you're trying to figure out is, well, what's wrong with the printer? Now, yes, I do want you to still use the KISS method. I still want you to check for some of the basics, like is it out of paper, toner, jammed, things like that. But very often, the problem may not have to do with the printer at all. 
it has to do with a networking problem, a communication problem. The user can't actually get to the printer, or maybe the user on their client machine can't connect to the print server. So sometimes you want to do some basic troubleshooting to see, especially in, in the case of uh, TCP IP printers where they have their own IP address, have the user check for basic connectivity with the printer and or the print server. Now the last thing I want to point out here, and this is very typical, not only is this typical test environment type question, but also in real world is very, very common that you can end up in a situation where certain print jobs are sitting in the print queue. And I'm going to show, I'll, I'll show you that print queue. Very often print jobs will be stuck in the print queue. So you'll see them just sitting there waiting to be printed, but they don't print. So you say, all right, I'm going to delete the job and the job won't delete. Well, what you need to do to solve that problem would be to restart the print spooler service. Now, let me go ahead and show you how you would do that. Back here on our New York member one print server, let me go ahead and close this printer control panel. We don't need that. What you want to do is click on start go to your administrative tools and select services. Now in the services applet, you can, can, you can scroll down here to the P's until you get to the print spooler service. All you need to do is, well, there's a number of ways of doing it. There's either a link right here to stop or restart the service. And by the way, although I said you should restart the print spooler, I have found it works even better if you stop it and start it as opposed to doing a restart. So you can either click on the links here or you can right click and stop it here. So I'm going to click stop and you'll see that the print spooler service has now been stopped and then I could start it. I'll tell you what, I could right click and select start but this time I will go ahead and click the link for start here. And you'll see that the print spooler service is starting and at this point you now have cleared out the spooler. You've cleared out any jobs that are sitting in the print queue. Okay, because that is what the spooler service is. It's what takes those print jobs and stores them until they are ready to be sent to the physical print device. All right, well, let's go take a look at what we've learned in this video. After watching this video, you should now know how to install a printer, whether you use the old control panel applet or whether you use the new print management utility, which of course you have to install the print service role in order to get that print management utility to be available. You should be able to make a print server by sharing printers, because really that is what makes you a print server is that you are sharing the printer for clients to be able to go ahead and access. You can control this access using print permissions. You can make your printers more efficient with printer pooling, priorities, and scheduling. And you should now know how to troubleshoot some of your common printer problems. All right, well, that's it for printing. I'll see you in the next video.